Greetings and welcome. This is Luke Smith of RuralVacantLand.com and uh, I want to do a live stream today and do some deal review. Look at some of the the uh, the properties that are on the website. A couple of the guys that have been posting properties on the website. I'd like to take a look at their deals and point them out and ask people in the audience that uh, if you have deals you'd like to review, you know, ones you're looking at buying or ones you're trying to sell um, vacant land in the U.S., uh, I'd like to take a look at it and see if I can put some input in, answer questions, figure out better marketing, better strategies, or or um, how to use the land. So uh, this is my attempt to do a deal review live call, and <laughs> we'll give it a shot. At the end of this call, I plan on giving some free land away to somebody who's listening who answers just a basic question um, that says you've been listening for a bit. And so that's the idea. It looks like um, got a couple people chiming in and um, let me see this so if you're just chiming in um, be giving away land towards the end of this call and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a deal reviews and so I got a couple people who contributed deals ahead of time um, that would like me to look at their deals and so I'm gonna try to get them live on the phone here and see if they answer and see if we can uh, do some deal reviews and if you're just chiming in, I'm going to give some land away towards the end of this video. Um, and if you have land that you'd like me to review, please put it in the chat box and I'll try to get to that too. So let's jump into it. I got a spreadsheet here. Um, if you want to do this for future calls, um, just email Gillian at ruralvacantland.com. I, sh I should put her email in the description below. I'll do that after I make this video and uh, she can she can line you up for the next time I try to do this. So let's see here. I got too many things going on in my screen. Let's pull up. Um, I think the first guy we're going to call, let's make sure I have his phone number on here. I don't have his phone number. Um, let's try a different one. So I've got the phone number to a guy who submitted a deal review, uh, Curtis. Curtis is, I believe he's on, on the website, ruralvacantland.com. He just signed up recently to put his land on there. And he says he's got a property in El Paso, Texas, um, $12,500. It's 1.65 acres, and he's saying it's not yet listed. So let's see if we can get him on the phone. And uh, let's see if I can get him, let's see if he answers. I'm doing this on a different screen so you can't see the phone number. That's not working, so let's do it this way. No, it's working here. So if you're just chiming in and you have a vacant land deal you'd like to cover, let's see if I can get the audio to do, go better. Let's see if that works better. So if you have a vacant land property you'd like uh, like review, hello. hello Curtis, this is Luke. Luke, how you doing? Hey, you're live on uh, YouTube live call. We're doing deal reviews. And I got your phone number, <laughs> so thanks for putting that in there. And you said you wanted to talk about this property in Texas, in El Paso County, yeah. uh, for twelve thousand five hundred bucks. Okay, let's just let's just do one because I don't want to be on the phone forever. But uh, so, what's the story with this property? I'll try to pull it up, um, but maybe you can tell a bit of a story about the property. Yeah, this is a this part of El Paso is sort of the eastern part of the county. It's a little sort of the undeveloped portion of El Paso County over to the east. So this particular property is just north of Horizon Boulevard. It's close to some other areas that uh, are very close, have utilities and water in the area. This particular property doesn't have utilities right at the lot line, but it's not far from it. Uh, so the area is growing and developing. It's just uh, slow. 
Okay. So why why this area? You, did you mail the area? Did you do tax deals? Yeah, I've or? done a couple of mailers. I've done a couple of mailers in the area, different size properties uh, and so forth. So I had some five and ten acre properties in the area. Uh, my last one of my last mailers was uh, some smaller two to four acre properties right in this general area along Horizon Boulevard where I've seen some development. So I got I picked this up off of a mailer. Okay. So you're targeting like really specific that area because you've sold stuff there before. Right. I sold some other stuff. So uh, I like the more targeted mailers than the broad mailers across the whole county. That makes sense. So I'm pulling this up on the screen. Yeah, I see the I see the street there. Uh, yeah, I see the Horizon Boulevard you're talking about. Just the other side of the street looks like there's a bunch of houses. So the other right, side... There's more houses in development in that area. So just on the south of that, you have properties that are selling for, you know, $25,000, $30,000 little incel lots. So just to the north of that property, here's 1.65 acres. Uh, and I'm asking half that price. Okay. Say that again. So the best, the best comparable you're finding in the area. So the best comparable in this area would be right to the south of Horizon Boulevard in that uh, little subdivision there, and they have okay. infill lots in that area that are selling for twenty-five, thirty thousand, and they're the wow. typical quarter acre, third acre size infill lots. Okay. So just to the north of Horizon. I'm selling 1.65 acres, and I'm offering it for half of what those infill lots are going for. Nice. That sounds like a good sales pitch. <laughs> so, yeah. how's the utilities? I'm zooming in. I see a power pole. Like looks like just south of your lot. There's a couple power poles. So I'm guessing. Well, there's a power pole that's like almost at the corner of your lot. Might even be the corner of your there's lot. Definitely, there's definitely utilities in the area. What I've noticed out there is uh, whoever buys it just need to make sure that the county doesn't have any issues with um, bringing power, connecting power to that area. Yeah. If it's, like I said, some of the other properties I have are further out. This one is so close, and you can just see to the west, there's people that have connected to power uh, just to, still North Horizon Boulevard, but they figured it out. So I'm looking at the legal description on this one. It says uh, 280 Horizon City, number 35, three and four. Is that two different lots? Yeah, it's uh, years ago, somebody, I think it's the Horizon City Community Association or came through there, some Horizon group came through there and subdivided or platted a big portion of this area. I guess okay. at some point the county came back in and combined a bunch of those smaller lots into uh, one APN. So you'll find that all scattered throughout here. Okay. A lot of those APNs have multiple lots under. Because I see next door you've got uh, um, lots that are half the size of the one that you've got. So could you, have you looked into selling, you know, half? You're selling one side, you don't care about that. You're already you're already presenting it at half I the market, <laughs> but right. Uh, I haven't looked into pulling these properties apart uh, in the county. I own several of them that fall in the same condition where they have multiple lots under one APN. Okay. And I've just just been selling them off like that. But it definitely, okay. whoever buys it from me has the opportunity to, you know, further subdivide this down and uh, go from there. Okay. So how does someone buy this property if they want to buy it from you? you is it on uh, uh, it's on you, website yet? Or? The easiest way is on my, yeah, on my website. It's listed on my website. It has a buy it now button on my website. It's the easiest way uh, to pick these up. What's what's your website? It'll be on your website soon, but not... Okay. Right. What's your website, Curtis? Shelby Lands something? Shelby, Shelby Land Deals www.shelbylanddeals. Here we go, shelbylanddeals.com. 
it's coming up. No, that's cool. That's neat. That sounds like a good deal. So, I mean, I'd probably be interested in just selling the halves. <laughs> you know, I'd probably mark it up a bunch. Um, Shelby Land right. Deals. So shelbylanddeals.com. I'll try to get that link in the description of this video for people to watch it later. Um, vacant right. vacant land at wholesale prices. So if someone bought that, they could go. They could probably go sell the bits and pieces. So that's a splittable one. That sounds yeah, like fun. Well, they couldn't. Yeah. Right. You got a, a bunch of them around. Oh, here's some Holbrook. And, okay, so a bunch of different ones. Okay, so that's that's an interesting deal. I, I'll hope to and I plan to review more deals over time so we got stuff to compare back and forth. And um, mm -hmm. I just, uh, just getting started and learning how to do this. <laughs> so thank you, Curtis. Thanks for being the first one on here today, this morning. I don't know if you're listening in on the YouTube, but calling me. yeah, I got a couple other guys. I'm going to try to pull up. Say again. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. Uh, uh, I'm watching a live YouTube video at the same time. Good deal. Thank you. Yeah, this is good that you're doing this for everybody. Yeah, I think we can look at lots of deals. Like I, I don't cover this area. Like I'm sure I'll learn. You know, from guys like you, I'll just keep learning and learning and passing the information along. And I think I'll use it somewhere in, in the future. It's just always a, a path, right, to go learn. So, um, that's it. Just keep learning. And uh, I've learned a lot from your videos, too. So keep going. Good keep deal. Doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to hang up on you here as soon as I find the right button and uh, call the next guy. And I'll probably talk to you later. Thank you, Curtis. Bye. Okay, so we've got a got another deal. The next deal, um, I know I've got this guy's phone number. He didn't he didn't submit it, but uh, the next one I'm going to try to call Jason Lydiard. Um, I've had him on the call before. Uh, he he uh, put a deal in here that he's he's got, and I think I need some more screens because I got too many things pulled up here. But I'll I'll figure this out. Um, we'll see if he answers the phone. See if I get the right phone number. Hey, Jason. Let me see if I can get you to bump up the volume here. Okay. Uh, so, Jason, thanks for answering the phone. Uh, we're doing a live call on YouTube, and I... And doing deal reviews and I see you submit a deal thank you for that and this one's got one heck of a long APN number it's uh, Jason saying can you tell us about this property so Walton County Florida 0.48 acres and um, what else should I know about this thing I'll try to find it while you tell us oh. about this property um, it is not it is not in a flood zone um, we had it sold at one point um the elevation is about 200 feet it's very close to the gulf of mexico uh, i believe it's within 45 minutes of the gulf of mexico it is uh it's it's vacant there is power on the street um we have a video on our eolands.com um youtube page uh basically power and sewer is in the area it is not on the property yet and there's also um, a uh, uh, mobile homes are, are okay on that land. Okay. So mobile homes, I'm hitting too many buttons at the same time. So mobile homes are okay. Um, power, water, sewer, say that again. Power, water, and or sewer is gonna be by um, septic, power, and Possibly water, according to the county, is coming. There is power on the street, but water is not down the street yet. Okay. So I found your YouTube channel, EO Lands, and um, I can't figure out which one it is. Maybe this point four acres, Owens Road, Walton. Point seven two acres in. Um, um, 
remember the county now. Citrus County. Citrus County, Florida. The address is 4909 Grand Circle Terrace in Homosassa, Florida. <laughs> I thought you said this was Walton County, Florida. And 0.48 acres. Do I have the right one up? No, that was, uh, uh, I, had, I had left Jillian a note. We sold that one yesterday. Oh, okay. Did you not get the update? Sorry about that. No, no, it's cool. The lands sell faster than we can keep them updated on the list. <laughs> so that works. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's find this next one. So you've got the Jackson County, Florida, a week ago, two acres. Oh. That's probably not it. Southern Boulevard, no, Jackson uh... It, the cash price is fifty-eight hundred dollars, five hundred dollars down, one seventy a month for thirty-six months in Citrus County. Um, I've got the parcel ID if you need it. Citrus County, Florida. I think I found the video. I'm not going to play the video on here because it's going to loop in. But um, go to link location. Let's see if this brings it up. Okay, so I think I found it on the map. Yeah, if you have the, um, so you, you've like bought this one, it's in your name, you can talk about the APN. Yes, sir. Um, APN for that one is 18 Echo, 19 Sierra, 30, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, Bravo. Um, I have the four GPS coordinates, it's basically a small rectangular box. Property taxes are extremely low in that area, it's $64 a year. Um, that one is still, it's, like I said, it's septic. Um, the water is, again, it says on site, but it's coming. Um, your power company is Wifokuchi Regional Electric Company. It is zoned for rural residential and mobile homes are allowed on it. Okay. I see some of the neighbors have like pools in their backyard. That's, That's part, correct. Part. Uh, you are allowed um, with anything over in that county, anything over 100 feet above sea level, you are allowed to put in a pool. At any time you can put in a above ground pool, but the zoning restrictions, you have to be 100 feet above sea level to put in a below ground pool and that one and this one is just fine. Just looks like Street View works on this one. It does. Most of these uh, in the counties that we that we um, specialize in, a lot of the Google. If Google hasn't gone down there, Bing has gone down there. Somebody has. Yeah, Bing's covered a lot of the rural areas. I've seen that too. Hopefully, I'm looking at the right side of the street. Uh, you probably delayed, but you can see there's like little palm trees in the bottom of the bush and like some taller pine trees. And the canopy layer it does look like, yeah, telephone pole, um, power line right there. I see what you're talking about. A lot of people, um, we're, we're in a very large market for fifth wheels. And okay. a lot of people from Canada, New York, uh, Ohio, and Michigan tend to come down here as what we call snowbirds. Yeah. And they bring their fifth wheel. And um, one, of the, one of the things about Citrus County that's really, really nice is that there's a couple of KOA campgrounds, and for about $20, you can take your fifth wheel over and dump it. So you don't have to have a uh, you don't have to have a septic system. They can just bring their their dually or whatever they're taking their fifth wheel and bring it in, live on it, and then once a month go and and take care of their waste. Gotcha. So it's, 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 a, it's a good thing. I understand. I didn't understand it first. I thought you meant dump it off, like leave it there, so you don't have to have it on the property. But you were talking about um, <laughs> dump, <laughs> dumping the waste. I get it. Yeah, that makes more sense. So that, it looks like people are using this neighborhood. It looks like a good one. How much are you asking for this property, and what's the market like in the area? Should I pull up the markets? You you can. I I can tell you that. Uh... For fifty-eight hundred dollars cash price, um, we're doing a five hundred dollar down, one seventy a month for thirty-six months. Um, most land in that area, because it's paved streets, is around the ten thousand to twelve thousand, uh, anywhere from eight, eh, nine thousand to twelve thousand in the area. We have okay. consistently been the lowest in the area for a while. Um, 
That's why you're selling them before I can get them on my list to talk about them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, no, the the low price, lowest price in the area is like the best sales pitch ever. That's just closes deals, deal after deal after deal. My 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 partner, uh, my partner Trevor um, Hartsock lives up in uh, right around Pace, Florida. So he's within an hour or two of these a lot of these lands and. He really specializes. Um, I uh, he really specializes in the in the vacant land in kind of the Panhandle or the north part of Florida. We just we get so many inquiries, um, but they're just one one thing that we learned with the East Coast is the most of your land is half an acre, three quarters of an acre or smaller. Um, yeah. So like out west, when you have five acres, ten acres, twenty acres, you just don't get that on the East Coast. Um, for the but for the same price on the East Coast, you're not going to get the larger amounts of land, but you're also going to be five minutes, ten minutes from a Walmart or an Ace Hardware or something like that. If you did need some solar panels or something like that, because all of these can be placed as an off-grid location in Citrus County. Okay. So, someone wants to buy this one. How do they? How do they go about it? Where's it? Where's it listed? Is it on? The absolute easiest way, Luke, would be to be through ruralvacantland.com and click on my name, Jason Lydiard, and down there there's a buy it now button, or there's also a terms price. That will immediately send me an email, um, and you can leave your name, your number, how you want the land, what, how you want the deed set up. If you want to put it inside of a trust, or maybe you want to give it to your children as a future, you know future Floridian or something like that. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, the way that, that, that you've set it up on your website and, and we take online payments and we take monthly payments if you want to do it that way. Sounds easy. Easy enough. So I'm, I'm slowly keeping up with you because I got so much stuff running on my computer. It's hard to click. <laughs> so I got the properties that you've got up for sale. This looks like it right here. I'm thinking this is the right one. That's it. And then, uh, yeah, 0. 0.72 acres says $5,800. Um, yeah, there's your video. Thanks for putting a video together on it. There's a buy it now button. This looks like that's set up ready to go. 5,800 bucks if someone wants to buy it. And there's the, uh, there's an address and GPS coordinates. That's what I should have done before. I should have just gone to my website to find it, huh? Um, yeah, you got <laughs> you got your you taxes. You know everything, Luke. Ah, uh, well, you put me on the spot here. That's part of, that's part of the fun of these live calls. Um. Yeah, so there it is. I just hit the GPS. Yeah, the GPS seems to be working. Got the map set up. So good job, getting getting that listing put together. It's so refreshing to see a listing that has all the information about the property so you don't have to like be calling a hundred times and asking questions or trying to track down the realtor or trying to a lot of the realtors just put a one liner and got this property for sale and a price and they don't even really give you the location or anything about it. Jason's got uh, you know, lot lines and you can go take a tour, like in the middle of the night if you wanted to, and buy it online, start using it the same day. Um, I love that, that aspect, that setup. That's, I tried so hard to get that set up going. Everybody laughs at me, um, in the real estate industry, but sell a lot more land than them. So guess who's laughing now? I'll, I'll tell you, Lou, it, it's, it, since we, since we, uh, started watching some of your videos on, on Will Vacant Land's, uh, YouTube channel, yeah. um, you probably, you, you know, we kind of stolen from you a little bit on your on your ideas and and just one thing that we found is just that like you said answer all the questions why go back and forth give everyone what they want what they need and if they happen to have another question be available um, yeah. Trevor and I are available you know pretty much 24 hours a day you can leave a message if we're sleeping or you can shoot <laughs> us an email yeah. I mean, we're not holding anything back we'll give you a county link yeah uh, we'll give you the county assessor's phone number. I mean, everything's either bought on a warranty deed or um, <clears throat> some, you know, some easily transferable deed that you can put it into anybody's name that you want. I think that's a beautiful thing. 
you're probably a lot better at answering the phone than I am. Um, this just putting so much land up for sale at such cheap prices, I can't keep up with my phone. So this live video is an attempt to try to get out and answer some questions and see if I can keep up with my phone. I'm not, I'm getting on average, you know, over, over 50 incoming calls a day, plus a whole bunch of outgoing stuff from text messages and emails and everything. And I'm averaging 11 minutes per phone call looking at my statistics. That's, that's over nine hours a day of just answering stuff on the phones. Um, I'm trying my heart out, heart out to keep up with everybody, but I just, I can't, I can't physically do it. So I'm going to try to do more videos like this, see if I can answer more questions, cover more of the bases. And, um, just want to say thank you too, for answering questions about your land and being available. And, uh, Absolutely. Just, There's one, one last thing, if you don't mind me at, go uh, for it. adding on here, literally. both Trevor and I, uh, Trevor is my, my business partner. He is, uh, uh, Trevor Hartsock is still a reservist in the air force and I am uh, a fire military myself. So we tend to deal a lot. There's, there's a couple of air force bases and some army bases up in that panhandle area. We really like to deal with, with um, either in service or prior service military. And there's, there's always a discount and love talking to those guys and girls. That's a good way of doing it too. Get your target market. Okay. So I think I'm going to hang up on you here so the call doesn't go on forever. And um, thank you. Thanks for answering the phone. Thanks for coming on. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Okay, so I hung up on him. Let's get uh, the next guy I got on here is um, I got Dave, and he's got a property in uh, – um, We'll pull this one up. Let me see here. I'll, I'll turn the screen on. We'll figure this one out. So Dave Ayers, he's also on ruralvacantland.com. His phone number is right on here, so I don't really have to hide it, I guess. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me just put this into a different, um, push some buttons here. See if Dave answers the phone. He can tell us about this property. Maybe I didn't hit the right buttons. I'm gonna try to boost the volume when my system catches up. Hello, Dave. This is Luke. You're live on on uh, YouTube. Hi, Luke. How you doing? <laughs> Thanks for coming on. So I'm just trying to boost up your volume if I can here. Uh, so you, thank you for replying to my ask my my uh, request for deal reviews. I'd like to do this going forward. I'm gonna try to keep doing this every Monday morning at 9 a.m. if I can keep it up. And um, so anybody in the audience has got deals that they want to get reviewed. Dave replied to my, my request for this. Dave also lists properties on ruralvacantland.com. And he's asking about this property in uh, Costilla County, Colorado. And I've got it pulled up on the screen here. And that's how I just called him. Um, it's right, right off the website. And so Dave, maybe you could tell us about this property. Sure, Luke. Sure. Um, we, we actually haven't had this piece of property yet. It just hit the website probably about a week ago and we've done a poor job of promoting it. So I thought, well, let's, let's throw this on here. It is, <laughs> it's five acres that's overlooking, uh, Trinchera Creek in South Central Colorado. And the, the photos and the video that we have is just some raw drone footage. And unfortunately it's, it's uh it's winter footage so so everything is it's in the dead of winter so there's there's not much beauty here but once the melt off starts hitting i mean this area is going to come alive with uh with greenery so so anyway you can see the the video on there and then we've got links to we've got phone numbers for planning and zoning you know you're 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 about seven miles from some good fishing right at Smith Reservoir. 
you've got the Rio Grande River over to the west of you. Um, and this is, of course, in Costilla County in south central Colorado, which I didn't should have said that before. Yeah, I, guess. I was just figuring that out here. So we got Denver north of it, Colorado <laughs> Springs, Alamosa, I guess, is the closest town I'm seeing. Looks like a whole lot of national, big green splatches on the map. I'm guessing those are really nice forests or parks or something. I don't know Colorado that well. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Sure. Yeah. There, I can't even quote, there's so, so much acreage that's national park right in that area. I mean, some of the greenery that you're seeing there, it's not even showing some of the, you know, it's not even including the BLM land that's over on the east side, you know? Yeah. So, so, uh, so it, we have a lot of our customers just purchase land just to come out, just to, just to say they own land in Colorado and, and have a hunting place for hunting camp once or twice a year, you know? So, yeah. so easy access to, to hunting and fishing, and that's, that's what a lot of our customers are. I mean, it's all over the board, but yeah. yeah. Do you ever find yourself like, if you pull up 3D on these properties, start moving your head around to try to see it better? <laughs> like it's gonna help. <laughs> I just caught myself doing that again. <laughs> like, oh yeah. I don't know. So the technology that's out there for some of these, some of these properties is pretty neat. So I'm looking at a view. This is just northeast of the property. It looks like there's a pretty beautiful mountain there. Um, See if we pan around. Yeah. To the south, yeah, it looks like Mount, some hills. Mount Blanca. Blanca. Mm -hmm. There's a peak to the south um, east a little bit. There's just there's hills all the way around. Yeah, but and that, that's the Sangre, Sangre de Cristo mountain range that you're showing there. Okay. No, I lost the the big one. Let's go back to the big one. So Mount Blanca, that looks like a good one. I bet you it's covered in snow this time of year, huh? Yeah, yeah. Actually, they're fairly they're fairly dry this year, but but yeah, usually usually mountaintops are picked up. Actually, you're on the delay. You're a little bit delayed, and I just saw you touch yeah. your head. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So <laughs> yeah, the YouTube. It processes it for a bit, so it's not exactly live, live, so you'll see a little little delay. I could change the settings on there, but then you can't pan back and forward in the video. The way the settings are now, it does some processing, and it should allow you to like go back in the video and watch stuff while it's still going live without processing for two hours after the video or something. Uh, just settings, yeah. so. Um, but yeah, so what's the, I guess I should ask you the price and What's the market like here? So you're here's the price three thousand nine nine seven. What's the market like that you remember or used to? Or I'm actually for just a for just a you know a plain piece of flat land in this area. You're you're generally around five to seven thousand dollars. I mean, you might be able to be you might even be in this four to seven thousand just for a just for a plain piece of land here and but anytime you have water nearby or, yeah. or a creek right along the border like this i mean you're jumping to a minimum of, of eight thousand dollars and that that's being very conservative and and so we continuously much like jason was saying we continuously are just much lower than the market even for a plain five acre piece of property we you know we we come in at at two two three thousand dollars sometimes sometimes around around two thousand so, so like you said that they're they're selling often before you even get them on the website yeah so okay there's some of the mountains <laughs> okay so yeah and i've i've got some raw drone footage on there that's mainly mainly what we have on there as far as photograph photography and such just to to give them a feel for the lay of the land this is a really nice build piece of land that would 
that you kind of that you just look down over the creek and then yeah. have Mount Blanc in the, in the back. And Mount Blanc is famous for being one of the one of the several. You know, there's I can't remember how many it is. Around 20, 20 mountains that are over fourteen thousand foot in Colorado, and it's one of them. So. Okay. So I'm seeing taxes are like just under fifty bucks a year. Yeah, Saying elevate elevations about seven thousand six hundred something. No HOA POA. Um, nope. I love that you have all these GPS coordinates. Does anybody and, and it, anybody you know, ever call you, you know, on the, anybody ever call you on these GPS coordinates? Because like. I don't know. I don't like to put all the corners on there because they're not as exact as it looks when you put all the corners on there. I usually like to put the middle yeah. and if people ask and then I give them the super disclaimer like, hey, here's GPS coordinates, but they're, they should be close, but not, you know, don't build up to those lines. Get a surveyor before you go sure. build something fancy. So I just want to point that out if anyone's watching. Yeah. Um, that, that's a good call with this being just a little different i i went ahead and aired on putting more than less. yeah because it's a <laughs> it's kind of a diff, different shape right um yeah correct yeah because it's a i don't know what you call that shape it's a unique shape i don't know what the name of that is in geometry <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i don't either yeah so this is a little is there a little bit of a hill there in the back? So you're looking over the water, um, lower yeah. elevation of the water, like it's maybe flat by the road and then it drops off some, kind of looking, looking yeah. there. Yeah, it's actually it's actually on the south, on the wider piece there on the south side that lines the road. That's actually where the hill is, and then the hill goes down as you as you look look and head toward the creek then. Okay. Which makes it a neat building building or hunting or camping type of place. Yeah, so you get the vista. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like there's some irrigation pivot points in the area. It's probably easier mm -hmm. to drill for water when you're near the creek like that, huh? Yeah, I'd say from what the what the drillers in that area say overall. Yeah. Okay. And and we put up we put on the website there, Luke. All we've got the phone numbers for planning and zoning there, um, for continued questions. And mobiles are welcome in this area. Um, camp, camping and RVs are allowed, but you're kind of, you're limited. They want you to do 14 days every few months. So for our hunters, that's no big deal. Um, but it's not quite our you know our Arizona piece where you just pull up and live then either so yeah so we've got that and then we've got the link right there on the web on rural bank that land or, or on our website to where you can just link right to the county and see the see all their codes right there nice as well are they pretty easy to deal with have you worked with them at all on any properties or asking questions or um, yeah as far as questions go they they're they're tremendous. Um, they're, they do a great job. Um, of course, just like with all, with most government, it, as long as they pick up the phone, you'll have, you'll have a great experience. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, and they're very friendly and open to answering any questions you have. That's been my experience so yeah. far. So oh, far. Good deal. Um, there's power in the area, but overall you're going to want to plan for, you know, solar generator or wind overall. Yeah. And and this is this valley has a wide use of solar as well. As, um, yeah. Okay. So and, and go ahead. And well well permits are, are not a problem. It seems to be everybody calls very concerned about that, about the water piece and there doesn't seem to be any problem getting a permit or or even then hold you know getting thrown in a holding tank is not a problem oh. there as well that's accepted there in the county so okay good thank you for sharing about the property 
and thanks for yeah. put, thanks for putting it on my website and uh, hopefully I'm sure somebody ends up loving that thing <laughs> and uh, I think yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up on you and go on I'm gonna try to go on to the next one talk to you soon All right. thank you thanks Dave <laughs> Okay, um, so let's skip to uh, the, the live chat and see who we've got in there, see if I can catch up. I just wanna say thanks everybody that's listening, that's watching. I'm gonna give away a free piece of land towards the end of this video. And uh, we've had a couple guys on there that have been listing properties on my website and I'm just doing a deal review, trying to learn more about lots of different vacant land deals that are out there. And um, so whether you've bought it yet, you're shopping it, or you've got it up for sale, Let's take a look and let's compare contrast and let's learn together. So into the chat, got a couple of people saying hi and, and good morning and uh, what's up? You canvassing this time, Dave Montero. Um, Daniel Diaz say, I'm looking to buy something in the one to 2000 range ASAP. Daniel, you can go on ruralvacantland.com. And uh, so let me make sure I got the right screen up here. So I got the website pulled up and if you're looking for something in a certain price range, you can go to listings and for sale and uh, you, you can just leave the locations open or if you have a more specific California, Arizona or some county or something, you could put that in there. But you could just do the price. You could do $1,000 to $2,000 and um, let's just get the ones that are for sale, contract for sale, not the ones that are sold, just the ones that are for sale, $1,000 to $2,000. And um, let's see how many properties we got here. One to two thousand dollars for sale. Fifteen pages, and there's ten properties per page to choose from. And um, well, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, no, oh, hundred forty-three, hundred, hundred forty-four properties up for sale right now. One to two thousand dollars. So I'm not going to take you through all of them. We'll be on a, on this call forever, but showing you how to go look at them, and then filtering them down more to areas that you like. Uh, allows you to do that. So thanks for the question. Let's go on. Um, Daniel Diaz says, I'll give him 2K for the property now. I'm not sure which property that was, but yeah, so the properties, they're on the website. I'll try to add links to this video of the ones we covered after after I'm done with the live thing. Um, and you can, I tried to talk about where you can find these properties to go buy them if you want to buy them. T Fox is saying, wonderful, but wonder still sort of works. I don't know. <laughs> I can't understand everything. It's hard for me to read and think 100% accurately when I'm on stage. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I still get a little nervous or something, but I'm trying to work through that. So let's keep working on it. Um, Jimmy Davis saying Arizona or Texas. Yeah, so you could do this search for Arizona and then do it again for Texas and see what you get. Um, one guy's saying a, T a Tacosca, Texas. I, I think you're asking that on a different YouTube comments, and I don't know where a, a Tacosca, Texas is. Um, maybe you should talk to Curtis, who was just uh, doing some of the Texas lands um, that was earlier in the call. He's on the website, ruralvacantland.com. If you go to listings and landowners and find Curtis on there, maybe he'd know where that property is. Um, or where property is around there. Curtis, here is his phone number, and he's on the website too. So let's keep reading through these. Thanks everybody for your comments, and thanks for sticking around. If you're just coming in, I'm gonna give away some land towards the end of the video. Um, Luke, did you did you and Anwar ever get the Minnesota mailing figured out from last week? No, that's we're gonna try to do that in the next day or two. Anwar's got uh, a meeting thing with some Minnesota regulator stuff I think midweek and then get through that and we're gonna mail based on that um, and then uh, hello everybody thanks we buy in land from you soon thanks blue jacket yeah I hope you get some good land and uh, saying I flip properties in Phoenix looking for a good mentor I can be your intern there you go thanks guys and I'm trying to read through a bunch of these comments here and catch up and see if anybody has got uh, some ones we can do live reviews on. Um, Jason's answering some questions. Brian 
I can't pronounce your last name. It says, hi, Jason. Thanks. Yeah, I was just looking at the Elko property. 2000 more off makes it even more tempting. Okay, agreed. But it's hard for some to... S okay, I think you guys are talking to each other. Um, changed my YouTube name yesterday. Blue Jacket changed his name. Okay, I don't know what it was before. <laughs> um, been watching you, Luke, for six months. Thanks, guys. I share all your videos, Luke. You're the best. Good. Thank you. Thanks for sharing my videos. I'm going to try to keep up in the quality of these things as we go. And I'll learn from you guys, too. That's how I can increase the quality of these things and try to give it some, give you some back. Um, Diaz says, oh, wow, that's a lot of properties. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of properties. I have a hard time keeping up on the phones with people asking questions about all the properties. Um, that's why I'm trying to do more videos so I can cover more of this stuff uh, in a better, more efficient manner, I believe is the way to say it. Like looking at the statistics on the YouTube channel, people are watching almost nine nine days uh, worth of video a day right now. Nine days worth of video. I can't talk that much on the phone about these properties and show people properties anywhere near that kind of efficiency. That's why I'm trying to use a lot more uh, YouTube delegating to technology instead of trying to answer every everything in person. Um, I, mean, I still answer the phone as much as I can, but it's... It, it, it's getting pretty insane. Um, and then one says, hi Luke, would, what would be the best time to reach you about your deals, deposit cash in your website? Um, I'll have to, I'll have to get back to you on that. I mean, this is a good time right now to talk about deals. Um, auto spelling doesn't work always. <laughs> My spelling is pretty poor. I'm so grateful for <laughs> auto spelling. It helps me a lot. Um, Joe Bowers says, hey Luke, I got an email from Gillian about the Freeland giveaway. Are you going to show us the property you have in mind before putting it in our name? Um, that's a really good question. So let me do that. So Joe Bowers won a piece of property in the past and I'm going through the process to get property into his name. And so he's asking if I'm going to tell him what the property is before I put it into his name. So what I'm doing to get the free properties is I'm negotiating with the state and I've bought portfolios of properties in the past from from uh, lots of different government entities that get the properties from people not paying the taxes, right? And so these are the cheaper ones. I don't usually do that for the, the bigger dollar um, properties because most of those get snatched up before people don't pay the tax and, and send them back to the state or county or whoever. So kind of smaller dollar properties that I'm willing and able to give away for free because I'm not like Daddy Warbucks, right? Um, I, I'm trying to buy through these tax deals. And so I make offers. I send them offers like, here's my offer, here's my cash offer, here's a check to pay for it, here's everything. If you t accept the offer, deposit the check and send me the deed. And um, sometimes they take my offers and sometimes they don't. So I go back and forth, and I usually try at pretty low prices. Most people think I'm insane for the prices that I try. But it's their, their government people that I'm buying it from. It's not their money. It's not, you know, they're trying to get rid of the land. They want somebody to use it. They want somebody to pay tax on it in the future. They're trying to get it off their books. It's like a garage sale. They're, they're just like... Get this stuff out of here. So if I come up with my 25 cents for my $5 record or whatever, people sell it. You know, same story at garage sales. I mean, but here it's it's land. So I'm going to um, go back to that question. And another guy um, who was in this, who's I believe is in this, this call, um, forensic contract audit was asking if he could get, he also won a free piece of land before, he was asking if he could get a, coup, a uh, discount on another piece of property instead of the free land. And so, yes, we could do that. And so you could do a discount, I mean, I could give you credit instead of the free land towards buying something off of ruralvacantland.com, that's fine, it's, a, it's an expense on my part to give the land away, I can direct the expense to something else. But well, what I want to do when giving this free land away is show you that we could sell it for a lot more than I buy it for. And so I think the cost of the land that I was probably giving him by the time it's all said and done, when I buy it in bunch bulk for a bunch of people, 
and myself and my kids and stuff. I put a bunch of the same land in my kid's name at the same time we're buying it, giving it to, to you for free. Is is probably like seventy five dollars roughly, maybe fifty dollars, maybe a hundred dollars. So I said I'd give you a hundred dollars to go use on one of the other properties, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. But I think if I took that property and put it up for sale, I could probably sell it for five hundred or thousand dollars, probably a thousand dollars, because I've gotten a lot better at picking properties to buy with better attributes because I've been dealing land in the markets so that I can get those properties in and just living and breathing that market for a while so I, I really get to know that 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 land and wouldn't it be better if you let me buy the land and then go sell it for you and then take the money from selling it and give you that money instead of the coupon to go buy a piece of property and I was also saying and why not roll that money into buying a couple more of these properties go buy a you know get a free property have me resell it for you, take the profits from that, roll it into half dozen more of these properties, and I'll go buy those, do the paperwork, it takes some time, yeah, but then put them up for sale, sell them to some happy people that want to go use them, and uh, take off with them, and then take the money from those half dozen, and use that money to go buy the property that you want, and I think doing that would be no money up, it would be time, you have to have patience, yeah, but if you have the patience and let me go do it, um, I think you can get a good deal of money out of that. So that gift is a lot more than just the 75 or $100 or something, that it, the hard cost it takes me to get the land. I mean, it takes a lot of time and energy above and beyond that cash to put all the paperwork together to sift through the properties and get the best properties. Like I've got a team of people in the Philippines that, ask, that I ask for this, 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 you know, all the attributes that I'm looking for in these properties, and they sift through thousands and thousands of properties and pick out the ones that have the highest score of those attributes that I'm going after and then we go buy those. So that's the ones that I'm going after and that's how I'm doing it. So I'm high grading the market, trying to get the best of the best ones at the lowest prices and delivering them to you that makes them the easiest to go resell with the largest spreads and more money out of the free property that I give you. So that's the idea. That idea is what I'm trying to present behind giving these free properties to you. So I give you the property and I give you that sales pitch, that definition by showing it to you. And then maybe possibly, probably somewhere along the way, you say, Luke, do it more. And that's where I can make some money off of it too. So I could make money out of giving land away. And so it's not, it's not me just totally being 100% generous. It's me being uh, greedy, which also makes it work so let's go back and uh, so maybe that covered a couple of the questions um, so Joe Bowers yeah it's because I, I say I, if I say this is the land uh, and then the people I'm negotiating with say no then it's gonna be another one and be like okay it's this one maybe it's this one maybe it's this one <laughs> might be the fifth one I try before I get one so I'd rather just say this is what you get um, Candy Pitts, is that your real name? <laughs> Sorry, I kind of laugh at some of these usernames. Um, thanks for the info, Blue Jacket. I'm an ex-realtor, and, and you do an awesome job listing and selling your properties. Thanks, Blue Jacket. I'm not a realtor, guys, but uh, I own these, or I have um, contracts on them that have partial ownership in the properties to be able to sell them without being a realtor, so it's all for sale by owner. Um David Lopez, you've probably answered this a ton, but can you explain what a mailer is and what the end result? Yeah, that's a great question, David. So thanks for answering the question or asking the question. A mailer is, um, I've done a, numerous videos on this YouTube channel. You can go back and look at some of them are titled like live mailer with somebody. And I hope to do a couple more of them this week, maybe even three or four of them lined up for this week where I'll give land away too. If, you, if you're subscribed and you're listening, watching, um, watch one of those videos and you'll learn a lot about what a mailer is but I'll try to keep it short it's basically writing a letter to somebody and saying this is how much I will pay you for your land cash dollar amount I'll pay you quick I'll pay you fast I'll do the paperwork I'll make it really simple I'll send somebody to your door with the cash in hand here you go and um, I usually use cashiers checks but I mean the last 
week or two i mean a couple of the guys been requesting cash cash i've done real cash cash i just did one i bought some land off the actual county sheriff the other day um that on some land he wouldn't take my cashier's check that is a nice looking piece of property so i sent him i sent him nine thousand bucks in cash in the mail you know that's how you buy land and the guy signed everything sent it back all good um not everybody's willing to do that. I don't like sending cash in the mail. I try not to do that. Sometimes the right deals and the right circumstances, I do it. But well, most of the rest of the guys send an offer and then they go through a title company and they go hire 20 people in between to figure everything out and pull it all off. Uh, I do most all of it myself because I don't like to pay all the middle people and I think it goes a lot faster when I do it myself. And it just, I'm a title abstractor. I can go do that part. Um, it's my money, so I'm the banker. I can do that part. Um, paperwork, I mean, I do the paperwork side. I, I do all the aspects, cut out all the middlemen and uh, run it myself. And so that gets around to realtors and people. If you're looking at prices on the market, what land is or real estate of any kind, what it is for sale, 99% of those ads are by realtors and representing somebody else. And you got to pay them, not just them. You got to pay their broker and you got to pay probably a realtor on the other side. Or, you know, there's there's usually multiple layers of people you have to pay in between. And the, the realtor, realtor doesn't even get that much of the money. It's just a whole bunch of people in between that take money and take a lot of time and mess up the communications. When I'm trying to deliver an offer, like, okay, here's what I'd like to buy. Here's how I want to do it. Here's a timeline. A lot of that gets lost in translation going through realtors. I'd rather just talk straight to the person that owns it. And when they have a qualm about something, I'd be like, okay, here's how we fix that. You know, in one phone call, boom, 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 fix all the problems, get the deal done. And uh, instead of going back and forth and back and forth. So that's, that's a cool thing about mailers. So let's keep going through the questions. Um, yeah, Jason's saying there's a deal review uh, from a Pima County mailers. Um, Somebody did a green heart. I don't know how that does, how that works. That's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> Spirit Wolf says, on this free deal, what is the size of the land? And the same question asked on seeing it. Yeah, so, I mean, it's free, guys. It's uh, it, it takes me a lot of time to go present these things. I got a whole bunch of different ones I'm, I'm buying. And, I mean, some of them are like three acres. Some of them are one acre. Some are one and a half. Some are like... 0.75 acres. I'd rather have a 0.75 acre on a street with a power line next to a lake than three acres out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but even the three acre ones I, I got in the lineup, they're they're on a road in the woods, no power, but you know, three acres in an area where three acres are going for a couple thousand bucks, that'd be a pretty cool, cool one to get. I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to get them for free, but it looks like I can, so I don't want to promise it. And then, uh, I'd rather just say it's probably like half acre above and might have power and utilities. Hopefully something better than that. But it's for free, guys. It's free. Just take it. <laughs> you know, I'd probably trade it for something else if you want. Um, Blue Jacket saying, I trust Luke on, on making payments to and from him. Thanks, Blue Jacket. Jason, um... Warren Ramsicle, Luke takes investors and so do we. We like to work with investors first because there's no marketing money involved. Investors know what a great deal is and what they exactly want. Yeah, so Jason Litter's talking about investors. Um, the comments are going faster than I can keep up. I thought there was a, uh, I thought I saw a live one to review in here. Maybe I missed it. Um, so anybody that's got, got a property they're looking at, they're shopping, they're interested in, maybe buying it, or they haven't yet, that'd be great. That's what this call is about. I'm going to try to do the same call again every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Um, So Hulu Khan is saying, when you say you're a title abstractor, you mean basically searching on Title Pro or CoreLogic? Um, well, that's a start. That's one way to do it. But a title abstractor, what a title abstractor can do 
is uh, puts a chain of title together, right? So, I mean, we could go back and we could start at, uh, um, you know, BLM land records where the president signed the property over to somebody back in the day, um, you know, 1911 or 18 something, whatever. Like if you go to BLM's website, let's pull this up. Um, so that's a good question. What's a title abstractor? So for some reason this is way blown up. I think I was trying to zoom in on something in the past. So I'm going to be on the point here and not be super fast at uh, finding something. Here we go. Land records. I think they kind of updated this website since I've been here. Um, So there's land records on the BLM website for a lot of these western um, areas. Let's see if I can pull this up. They changed this website. <laughs> You're make me look like an idiot, Mr. Hulu got con. Um, I just did this the other day, and I was going to show you one. But the website changed. So, that's not what we want. They've got a beer, they've got a, um, records website here we go this looks more like it search documents so let's pull up this uh, quarter section I have in New Mexico Quay County New Mexico Pull it up on the website. But what, what I'm trying to get at here is you can go see when the land was transferred to a private individual from the President of the United States. And um, you can take that, that transfer and that title and you can take it all the way through to present and see the person that currently owns the property. And you can take that and you can take it all the way back to that uh, that patented land claim patented is you know the top 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 piece of the government um, transferring a thing over whether it's the federal government or the state you know if it's homestead it's a state it's federal government it's fed it's you know um, that is is what a title abstractor can do and it depends on how much data you have uh, title pro core logic um, those those are more modern sets of data but things like this like going to the BLM records is older sets of data and in between you have records in the county um, that you can um, that you can pull up here's Quay County I think it's the only one in Quay County on the website it says sold but it's it's not actually sold it's kind of in between <laughs> it's like in escrow I guess you could call it um, so it's got a legal description on here and uh, it's a quarter section so where's that legal description legal description the southwest or the southeast quarter of section 20 and township 12 range 33 east so we're over here we want range 33 wow range 30 33 east um, what else did I see on there range 30 Township 12 North, Township 12 North, um, 
Meridian is going to be, there's only the one in New Mexico, section 20, right? Let's make sure I get the right section. Section 20. So we're going to search everything in that section. That's not just my quarter section. Like if you look over here, 160 acres is a quarter section. A full section is 640 acres. If you take a full section and you divide it in four ways, like northeast corner, southeast corner, northwest corner, southwest corner, you get four corners. Each one of those corners or quarters is 160 acres if it's a normal size section. So 160 acres is what I have here. This is a quarter of the section. The legal description says a southeast quarter of section 20. So these records is the whole section. And if we look at this, um, south here's, I don't know this, this word, whatever. It's the southeast quarter of section 20. And if you look at this, Joe McNutt got the property back in the day, um, the patented claim name on document, patented image, let's pull that up. So title abstractor, if they're asked to, can go back to old, old stuff like this. You don't have to be licensed to be a title abstractor. I think that's a real, um, something people don't understand. So if you are saying, oh, I need to know exactly who owns this property, I'm gonna hire a title abstractor the information you get back from the title abstractor is only as good as the title abstractor. I mean, it's not like I passed the bar exam to become a title abstractor. I just studied this stuff and then I feel comfortable saying I, I can abstract titles. I don't, people don't hire me to abstract titles. I do it on my own behalf because I'm curious because I want to know what I'm buying and I don't want to sell something to somebody that I don't own. Um, so here's the patented image. This thing is like, See if we can make it bigger somehow. Um, let's. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just go through it like this. Um, well, maybe that's why this page is. Here, let's do that. Um, didn't get that much bigger. So, it's saying Tucumcari, New Mexico. So land office, blah blah blah. Let's claim it. Claimant Joe McNutt, according to the provision of the Act of Congress, 1824, 1820, that's a long time ago, entitled an act making further provision for the sale of the public land. So it went from public land to private land based on this act in 1820. It didn't mean it happened in 1820. There's probably a date on here somewhere. Um, southeast quarter of Section 20 in Township 12 north of Range 33 east of the New Mexico Meridian, New Mexico containing 160 acres. According to the official plat survey, said land, you know, the land office, blah, blah, blah. You know, the whole the whole agreement. Testimony here of I, William H. Taft. That's like an old president. President of the United States of America have caused these letters to be made patent and the sale of the general land office to be hereunto affixed, given under my hand at the count city of Washington, the uh, ninth day of March, um, 911. So 1911, uh, Taft signed this paperwork. It's got his actual signature on there, William H. Taft. But for a 160 acre quarter section, the President of the United States signed off on it, giving it to this guy. Um, Joe McNutt and so now if I went and I called the um, the assessor's office in uh, Quay County New Mexico should we get them on the line give it a try it might take too long you guys are gonna be at people are gonna fall asleep um, Quay County New Mexico whoops um, Assessor, Quay County, New Mexico. So if I, here's their phone number right here. So if I got, here's the guy. So you get this guy on the phone, the assessor or his assistant or something. Chief Deputy, Deputy Assessor, probably get Janie on the phone. She'd probably answer the phone. And you say, okay, I'm interested in this property. I'm either I'm buying it or I'm trying to do a title search on it or whatever. Say, you know, hi Janie, thanks for taking my call. And I'm interested and I wanna know about this property. Here's APN number. And um, I got the APN number 
you know, right here. It's a big old long number in Quay County, New Mexico. Down here it says APN, and there's the number. You give her that number, and uh, she'll look up the property, or she might ask for the legal description, like here's the legal description. You go through that quarter range township, township section stuff, and you say, uh, I would like to know what, uh, you know, if you're calling her, you go backwards. So you start with who owns it right now. What's the document number? Let me pull this. You say, what's the document number of the uh, of this, you know, the most recent transfer on record of this one? And she's supposed to keep track of the transfers on record. The assessor keeps track of them, so they keep a document number. And that document number would reference, um, I doubt that uh, that BLM one had a document number on it. Let me go back to the screen. Well, let's say this this was a deed that had a modern document number up here in the upper right hand corner it would say like document number recording number and stuff and it's probably this number right here like the old school way of doing it um, but you get that document number and you write that down like okay and you try to write down a name or whatever else she might tell you like the date that that thing was and sometimes the document numbers will start with the year and then it'll have a number and if you're in the office you could go to that office and you could go look up the book and page and stuff of where all those documents are um, but if you're doing it over the phone you want to get all those numbers if the assessor will help you do it over the phone some of them won't some of them are too busy and they hang up on you but if they help you that's great write those numbers down say okay what was the transfer prior to that one and it might be 20 years 30 years 50 years or something before and she would go through the book on that property and, and tell you the numbers of all those transfers and you get all those numbers, and then you go and you call, um, let's change this over, then you go and you call the, uh, let's keep doing this Quay County, Quay County Recorder, ah, uh, it's Quay County Clerk, uh, New Mexico they call them clerks. Most places they call them recorders. So, yeah, Quay County Clerk. So call the clerk, call the Quay County Clerk. You know, oftentimes they're at the courthouse and keeping track of all kinds of records of different things, land ownership to lots of different records. And you say, okay, I've got these record numbers and um, I would like to order copies of these documents. And they might charge you, I don't know, two bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, 50 bucks or something for these things, depending on how old they are. And uh, I'll have the clerk on here. I'm not even sure I'm on the right page. But you get the idea. So you go to the Quay County Clerk's office and you call them and you order those documents. And they might email them to you if they're really nice and modern. Middle of nowhere, New Mexico, they'll probably mail them to you. And they might take their sweet time. But eventually you get those things in the mail or email or fax or whatever. And then the abstract or what they do is they look for a chain of title and so they go from modern backwards and they go okay so-and-so owns it now they bought it from so-and-so here's the paperwork connecting the dots and then so-and-so owned it before they bought it from so-and-so and they go and they here's the paperwork connecting the dots and they'll, they'll they'll have they have like forms I've got abstract or forms I could probably pull up I'm not very fast at pulling them up but um, let me just grab a piece of paper. It would be, I'm just going to do a cartoon. And um, let's see if I can pull this up. Let's say these are names, right? And uh, you're going to link this person to that person. You're going to link that person to that person. And that person to that person. And you're going to look for um, breaks in that chain. And what does a break look like? So let's say we're going back in time. This person bought it from this person, who bought it from this person, who bought it from this person, who bought it from who? This person owned it before, but how would they, how'd they go from here to there? Did somebody die? Did, uh, you know, wife sign off for a husband or something? Um, what's the story? Does it make sense? Was there a mortgage that, that was never paid off? 
or was it uh, never recorded that was it was paid off or you know these questions start coming up if it doesn't line up and that's where you get a messy title or something's weird something's wrong and um, do, looking for that chain of title you can see those things and point them out um, the title abstracting that Hulu got con I can't I'm sorry about the name um, is asking about is more of an investor style title search like this going back you know 50 years or something bing 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 is more of a bank using somebody else's money nervous about everything doesn't ever want to be responsible for anything they do the you know bend over and cough check and uh, the investor usually does the um, title pro real quest pro kind of check or county website or something and pulls up a deed and they they look at okay who owns it right now and how do you spell their name what's the legal description that that's more of an investors title search when I mean, the banks they go back 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 and if you want to get crazy about it you go back to like the BLM days and the old 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 patented records um, I did the old 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 patented records because I was looking for access I was looking for routes I was looking for ways to use that property um, throw that away so maybe that makes sense maybe uh, hopefully I'm answering some questions about title abstracting I mean I could go on a lot more about it but that's let's move on with the video um, see what the guys say so <laughs> let's be honest BLM is another unconstitutional federal government bull s uh, illegal racket lol <laughs> they have no actual authority other than that which naive citizens are duped into believing nice um, no title bar exam no there's no title bar exam so you go to a title company they hire an abstractor I mean they, they could be finding somebody off of Craigslist that they've never met who knows how good of stuff they're doing or not to for the checks and balances the title when you're ordering title and they say yeah title looks great say hey you got some proof of that can I like get copies of those documents can I read through it sometimes when you run through a title company they'll give you the whole stack of documents copies of them and the title abstractor will sign off and he'll have insurance and his insurance will be on there and insurance goes for this much and that there there's some stuff in there that says this is a little more stand-up quality but uh, doesn't have to be there isn't always so yeah get the paperwork read it yourself I think you can learn a lot more about what the property is um, make the call Luke yeah call the call the con I'll call counties and and do that kind of stuff in these kinds of calls in the future I think I gotta get past a, a little bit of learning curve first um, it's a Craig Hewlett type of subject so I'm not sure who that is um, do you have anything in California desert areas yeah so California desert areas there's a bunch of them right now that uh, Willie has or he just had recently on the website California desert areas um, I think one of the best ways to find those properties is if you go to the map search on ruralvacantland.com I've sold a lot of California desert properties in the past and um, I mean lots and lots of them so that's always been a staple for me but I'm pretty much sold out right now I think I might have like a 40 left and an 80 80 acre one um, but a lot of the smaller ones are all all snapped up and that's usually what people are asking for is really really affordable ones um, so this map search is coming up here I'll keep reading while that's loading and uh, how about California pines um, Luke can buy it don't worry Luke who Hulagu is my alter ego name. There you go. <laughs> my alter ego is Judy. Okay. Um, thanks for the lesson, Luke. Kern County. Okay. So let's go. So I got the map pulled up. Let me change the screen here so it's not just my face looking at the camera. Um, so here's the here's the um, the map of what we've got. 
going on the website right now. And so let's, uh, let's tune into like a political map. So here's Southern California. See all these red dots? These are the ones that are sold. And this map hasn't started that long ago. I mean, it's not, I don't even think this map's a year old. And these things have already sold in like the last year. Um, so these green ones are for sale. And I think these are all, all Willie properties. And um, so he's got a couple here by town, a couple over here. And these these ones are closer to L.A. I think, oh, here's one. Let's take this one, for example. This one's close, 8.5 acres. And um, let's see how much he's asked. Yeah, see, William Goldberg, Willie's on the website. His phone number, email are on there. So this is his property. He's the owner of it. I'm not the owner of this one. I'm not selling his property. He's he's selling it for sale by owner. And so it's he's asking 7490 he had a he just had a bunch of these. I mean, most of them have been selling pretty fast. So he's still got this one, eight and a half acres. So go on the website, look at the map search, and you can look at a bunch of these different properties. See if you find your Cal Southern California desert acreage. Let's keep reading the comments. See if anybody's got a deal review. Um, let's see. Georgia, someone asking for Georgia. Um, off grid Arizona, here's my kind of question. If someone bought a large parcel of land from you and wanted to divide it up and sell off smaller pieces, would you help with that and split the profits? Yes, I'll do, I'll do that. I like, I like splitting up properties. Um, let me see if I could uh, pull up one here. That um, let me do this on another screen and pull it back if I can. There's there's a deal I, I was just working on this weekend. Um, See if I got the picture. Let's see if I can pull this up. I don't know if this is the right picture. See if it'll work or not. Um, so I'm going to put it on the screen, then I'm going to take my face off here if I can get it. It's not opening. There, here it is. I've been learning to um, draw property lines a little bit better. And so this is an example of where the one I did this weekend. And so this is uh, pretty much 40 acres, it's like 38 or it's just shy of 40 acres. And so I sold half of the property to one guy and I sold half the property to another guy. And then I wrote up legal descriptions for them to be able to split the properties, the halves five ways if they wanted to. I mean, they don't have to, but if they wanted to. And um, this is this is the uh, this is what I drew up for them. And it's I'm not 100% sure this is the best way to do it because there's a bunch of halves in here, and it could be split up even more if the person who bought that wanted to split it up some more. But this this way, it's got road all along the south. And coming around, coming around, and then road going a bunch to the north. So people could buy any one of these lots and get all of them around the road. They're in the pine trees. It's in uh, it's in Arizona, and uh, these lots will probably show up on the website pretty soon. I'm not exactly sure about the pricing and stuff, but just an example of some of the recent work on helping some people split up some land. Um, let's go back to face shot. <laughs> Not that I have a beautiful face. Need some hair, right? Um, where did the uh, the chat go? My chat disappeared. Here we go. Okay, so I think I think I'm getting through a lot of these questions, and. Um, yeah, Blue Jacket, Jacket says, thanks, Luke, for teaching people how to buy the property and research Tyler Deed. Still streaming live. Yeah, we're still streaming live. Um, 
it says the stream health is a little slow but uh, we're still streaming live um, I uh, I think it's time to give some land away we've been going at this too long it's almost an hour and a half into the video I meant to go for an hour so let's see a good question um, what was the name of the first caller to answer the phone on this live call whoever can come up with his name his first name or his website or some really good reference to him gets a, gets a free piece of property somebody that hasn't won property from me already somebody who doesn't work with me or for me and um, is listening live right now on the live call not the recorded thing later on you got to be live to answer this and the name Curtis somebody got it Jason Macy good deal Jason I don't think you ever won before so I think that works Curtis yeah Curtis was the first one to answer the phone he actually gave me his phone number <laughs> the other guys didn't give me the phone number I had to look them up so Jason thanks for listening thanks for watching if you would email if you would email Gillian who works with me Gillian G-I-L-I-A-N Gillian at ruralvacantland.com and say you were on the live call today and uh, whatever today's date is April 2nd and the one um, you know doing deal reviews and we need your phone number would be good your email address because you're emailing it in so we should have that we need a mailing address to send the deed to and for future tax bills to go to on your property and um, a title like we need to know what name you want the property to be in and the title could be could be just your name or it could be you and your spouse or your kids or some somebody someone that you want that land to be named in if you have questions about title maybe call me ask me about title and I'll try to guide you through it um, the uh, so yeah that's it that's the free land so please email Gillian G-I-L-I-A-N at ruralvacantland.com and with your information and I'll get you a free piece of land it's not gonna be super fast that you get it It'll probably take a couple months um, but it's free and then if you want me to resell it I'll, uh, I'll go resell it for you I'll charge you 50% of the profits above and beyond my cost of the land to resell it or you can just go do whatever you want with the land you can go sell it yourself go put it on Craigslist or Zillow or whatever go sell the thing however you want but if you want me to do it I'll, I'll gladly do it for you and uh, thank you thanks for listening everybody thanks for watching and if you're watching this later on after the live video please subscribe to hit the next one I'm gonna try to do this a couple times this week with doing some live mailers I'm gonna send out a bunch more cash offers on land try to buy some more land and I plan on doing this every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'm going to just keep giving land away and giving land away and giving land away. I think I'll be able to give better and better land away as we go when I get more comfortable with this. And um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Luke Smith, RuralVacantLand.com.